Doing work underwater is um, fun and interesting, but it also takes a lot of planning and preparation. Um, I think the first thing that people realize when you're trying to work underwater, when you get underwater, is that you can't talk. And so you're working with your friends or your collaborators or colleagues, um, other scientists, and you can't really communicate other than by waving your hands around underwater or giving signals or um, certainly if you knew sign language that would be very beneficial um, but usually we just kind of uh, you have to write everything down so if you're trying to communicate something to your your friend or your uh, co-worker you have to carry p underwater paper and pencils or pens that can work underwater because you can't talk so knowing that you can't talk before you get in the water, you have to do all of this pre-preparation to make sure everyone knows what the plan is and you know where you're going and at what depth and how long you're gonna stay down and who's carrying this bucket and who's carrying the bag of supplies to do this and who's gonna count fish and who's gonna you know, measure the corals and all of that is all pre-assigned before you even get underwater. And then you have to prepare all your gear and um, you know, make sure that you've got everything. Uh, there's many cases where you'll forget your weight belt or something. You have to wear weights when you go diving because our bodies are buoyant and so you have to wear a weight belt that helps you sink down to the bottom so that you're not constantly drifting up to the surface. So once you have all your gear and you have all your equipment and everybody's been assigned their task, then you finally jump in the water and depending on where you are, um, Oftentimes we jump in the water at some places, some islands that people have never been and the first thing you do is your eyes bulge out of your head and you are so overwhelmed with how beautiful it is that you kind of sometimes forget, oh yeah, I'm carrying all this equipment, I better pay attention to what I'm doing. So you jump in the water and you let air out of your buoyancy compensating device, which is kind of like a, a life preserver. Um, so that you can sink down to the bottom and then when you get to the bottom you have to be careful not to be dragging yourself all across the corals. Everything's alive down there so you have to put a little bit of air back in your, your buoyancy compensator device so that you float just above the surface and, um, and then you get all your equipment and you start working. Um, it's always funny because People don't, you don't necessarily remember that things are buoyant, so you could open your bag that has all your supplies in it, and we're often collecting samples of little corals or little seaweeds, and we use Ziploc bags to collect those. Um, well, the baggies are going to be buoyant, so the second you open your bag, everything goes flying up to the surface, and your pencil's gone, and all of a sudden you have a garage sale of things floating away on the surface, so we do a lot of... Uh, you know, that will maybe happen on the first dive of the first day of, the, of a big long trip and then everybody remembers how everything goes and you work it out. But um, it often is a, a game of uh, search and recovery <laughs> for the first few dives. Um, but then to work underwater, you know, the sound, like I said, you, you can't talk. Um, the sound, it feels almost like your head is in a fishbowl. Um, it's, it's very quiet um, unless you're fortunate enough to be diving in a place like the Hawaiian Islands in the winter when all the humpback whales are there um, giving birth. And then the entire water column is full of humpback whale songs. Um, and it can be so loud that your skin, um, your body almost vibrates from the intensity of the sound. Um, you can hear dolphins underwater. They have a high-pitched kind of squeak. Um, so depending on where you are, the, the sounds are quite variable. Um, and then it's just, you know, again, since you can't communicate, you have to have your, your plan and everything's worked out in advance and you have to stick to the plan. That's one of the most important things with diving. You can't have a plan and then end up deciding that you're going to just leave and leave all your buddies and your fellow divers down down on the bottom because they'll worry about you if they don't know that you're you know so you you have to have a very uh concise dive plan and we have um all professional scientific divers have a diving safety officer that's in charge of our activities and what we do underwater so we have to write a very detailed plan of what we're going to do before we even get in the water that they have to approve and they have to make sure that we have all the proper safety equipment 
So you can imagine um, scuba diving can be dangerous. You know, if you run out of air underwater or something like that, you have to have the proper precautions, which is why you always have to have a buddy. So you have your dive buddy that's there diving right next to you that can supply air if your equipment malfunctions or whatnot. So there's a lot of preparation and a lot of planning, but um, in the end, if you have a plan and you stick to it, uh, we get a lot of work done underwater.